Guys, I just got done watching the latest release from Shout Factory Screen Factory Event Horizon, and I'm about ready to tell you what I thought about it in my next Blu-ray review. Stay tuned. Everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media Channel. I am Ken here today to review the latest release from Shout Factory Screen Factory Event Horizon, the 1997 science fiction horror film starring Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne. This is a recent release that just came out this past Tuesday and we're gonna get into the review. I'm gonna get into whether or not you should pick this up and add it to your collection. But before I do that, I wanna ask that if you guys are not yet a subscriber, of the mid-level media channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below i do all kinds of great amazing content on this channel centered around the world of physical media movies entertainment just all kinds of awesome content on this channel that I would definitely love for you to come check out on a regular basis so hit that subscribe button also be sure to like this video guys i would definitely appreciate that any like that you give this video will help this video out help this channel grow help get more eyes on the stuff that i am doing here on this channel and i would definitely appreciate it and also be sure to comment down below your thoughts on the film event horizon whether it's the movie itself the Screen Factor release. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and let's open up a discussion about this movie. So with these, I usually like to I, I talk about the movie for a little bit, then I'm gonna do an unboxing of this, talk about the packaging, talk about the visual quality, talk about the audio, and then also the special features, just to give you a well-rounded view of this release and just how I feel about it in general. But we're gonna talk a little bit before we get into the movie because this one is kind of unique as far as Screen Factor releases and the fact that this was supposed to come out last September. It got pushed back because of what the uh, Screen Factory noted as like COVID reasons, as what's going on in the world, I think is what they put um, in their thing. So manufacturing holdups more than likely, but a lot of people were speculating at the time but the main reason that they delayed this was that they were trying to uncover all of the lost footage from that 110 minute paul ws anderson original cut that was screened back in 1997 and got hacked and trimmed down all to hell to put out a shorter movie as mandated by the studio so a lot of people have been wanting to see that cut since this originally came out in 1997 they were hoping they were going to get that added to the screen factor release but unfortunately guys as i'm telling you this right now um the that cut is not included in this there are some deleted scenes that were added in but it was not nearly the amount speculated and it certainly wasn't enough to make up that original cut that was released so will we ever see it who knows you know there's also interviews in here with paul ws anderson where he talks about that a little bit we'll get into that in a second but unique because this was pushed back like six months but we finally got it we finally got it here guys and regardless if it has um the new footage or not or the old footage that was cut it's still a damn good movie so let's talk about it guys this movie definitely takes heavy inspiration from the film alien but as where i would describe alien um, as a monster movie a creature feature set in space i would very much describe this one as a haunted house movie set in space and it really draws a lot of inspiration in alien just in terms of like atmosphere and just the space aspect of it but as far as its horror roots, its horror inspirations, I would say it draws more from films like The Shining, from films like Hellraiser than it does from Alien. It really feels like a haunted house movie set in space. And that is what really makes this film unique, in my opinion, and really just stands out as one of these classic science fiction horror films that I believe will stand the test of time. I believe people will be talking about this movie for decades to come because of the unique things that it does in terms of how it sets up its story and pace um, and just the overall tone and aesthetic of this film just feels so unique all throughout it. Another thing that I would say is where this film really draws and is inspired by a lot of things, I think that it has also inspired things as well, most notably the Dead Space games. I don't know if anybody, I don't talk about games a whole lot on this channel, but I used to be a pretty big gamer. I played Dead Space 1 and 2. They're two of my favorite games. And I would say that those two games really draw a lot 
of uh, inspiration from Event Horizon because those are also very much, they're also monster, but there are also some supernatural elements to those games. So I think that a lot of aspects from those games are drawn from the film Event Horizon. So um, let's get into this actual movie. I'll talk about just the synopsis, the cast, my positives, my negatives, um, give it a review, and then we'll get into the unboxing. But you got Sam Neill's character, Dr. Weir, who has was responsible of engineering, of creating, being kind of like the architect of this ship. He created the Event Horizon. It got sent into space all the way out to Neptune, and then it was lost. It went into a black hole or something happened, as we discover later on in the film. It comes back, it sends a distress signal, and Sam Neill joins the crew of Lawrence Fishburne, Jolie Richardson, of Jason Isaacs, the, the entire cast of this film. He joins that crew, goes out to the event horizon, and they board it in an effort to save the crew that was lost um, years previous. So, very cool setup for the story. It, it is a very cool setup, very cool beginning. I enjoy the story. Like I said, it's a, it takes a lot of interesting twists and turns throughout, but there are some negatives to it, which we'll get to in a second. But I just think that Sam Neill, who does all kinds of great work in the horror genre, he's been a horror genre actor for years with films like The Omen, The Final Conflict, of course, John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness, which I actually think is super underrated and more people need to check out. Um, that's one that I honestly would love to review on this channel. So let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments below. But just done so much great work in genre horror films and he really gets his chance to shine in this film. I love his character. I love the way it starts. I love the way it ends. I love his arc. Um, I love all the twists and turns along the way. I just think he does a fantastic in the job in this movie. Really starting off as kind of just this scientist type character, but really getting a chance to really chew that scenery um, as you get into the later stages of the film. You also got Lawrence Fitzburn is just an iconic actor, of course, from films like The Matrix. Um, and he's awesome in this movie as well, playing the more kind of counterbalance to Dr. Weir, who's the more reckless type. And it's, J Lawrence Fishburne is kind of the more sensible, the more reasonable. He's the commander. He's the leader. He's the more heroic type character in this film. And I think he does a really good job just kind of playing off of Sam Neill in this movie because he just wants to keep his crew safe. He wants to go in, he wants to rescue. Whereas Sam Neill's character, as it's revealed later on in the film, has other motivations for what he wants to do um, as far as coming back to the event horizon. So a great cast in this movie. You have Jolie Richardson, who was in the Color of Space movie recently, but I know her as the, the wife from Nip Tuck. I used to be a big Nip Tuck fan. Uh, Jason Isaacs is in this movie as well. He's a fantastic character actor who I know primarily um, he's in tons of stuff, but the thing that I remember him the most for is The Patriot with Mel Gibson from 2000. Played a great villain in that movie. He's a really good character here. Just a lot of good performances and characters, and I love the way that this crew and this cast plays off each other throughout the film. The set design here is fantastic. Some really great special effects work. The direction is solid. Say what you want about Paul W.S. Anderson, who directed this film, who also directed, you know, the first Mortal Kombat, directed a lot of the Resident Evil movies, Monster Hunter, which recently came out. He pretty much just collabs with his wife lately on uh, adaptation movies, but he, he's done some good work in the past, and I would say this is without a doubt probably one of the only films that he's done that I would say is a good movie. Event Horizon is a legitimately good movie and definitely the best thing that he's done as far as what I've seen from his career. I don't think I've seen everything, but um, he does a fantastic job here. Just the scope, the scale of this film, the effects work. This is really it, it, incredible how this movie came about. And that was the great thing about the 90s. You could just get awesome original stories like this and they could get a super high budget and get to do what they need. I don't think that this movie performed as well at the box office, at least what the studio was um, anticipating. But, you know, Paramount, they believed in this project. They believed um, in uh, Paul W.S. Anderson's ability to adapt this to the screen. And I think he just did a phenomenal job with this film, just with its overall look and, and visuals, um, the special effects work. I think everything in this movie is just on point for it from a technical perspective. Score, I, I like the score in this. It is very cheesy. It's very 90s techno electronic 
um, but I do enjoy the score in this one. Just for the 90s nostalgia, you know, I kind of grew up during this whole like techno boom uh, and uh, it, it's a really cool score that I do enjoy and actually think fits with the film quite well. As for my negatives here, guys, I mean, this movie, like I said, there was an original cut of this film. It was 110 minutes long. It was screened for people, so people have actually seen it and during that screening, people enjoyed it, but the studio decided that it was just a little bit too long. Um, so Paul W.S. Anderson, notably, he had to meet a timetable. He had to meet a time schedule. He was going on to do another movie after this, as was revealed in the special features. So he only had a week or I think it was like 10 days or something to cut this film, cut 40 minutes out, and he had to get it done as quickly as possible. And he even admits in the features that he wishes he would have had like 10 weeks to do this because it really was that kind of a job what he had to do. So he had to, to cut stuff out of this film. I think for the time that he had, um, I think he did a good job because this movie, like I said, it's still a good movie. It's a movie that I really enjoy. I think that if he would have had the proper time to really cut this movie, or even better, if the studio would have just allowed him to have his original vision, I think that we could have got a movie on the level of A Shining, a masterpiece of modern horror right here with this movie, and we'll never know, probably. I don't think that we're going to get this cut ever. I hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that we do, um, but this is the kind of movie that I think could have reached legendary masterpiece status and it's still just very good. Like I said, the one criticism I give here is the movie, it feels like it has been cut. Like you can tell in certain, certain sequences, it feels a little chopped. It feels a little incomplete, like some stuff is missing here and there, some stuff, some scenes that could have been added to really flesh out these characters and this story even further and would have really added to the film. There's one scene in particular um, that I can point to where Sam Neill gives that iconic line where he says to Lawrence Fishburne, you can't leave, the ship won't let you. And he kind of sinks back into the darkness. Then in the next scene, like you would think that that would be the point where he just went full on evil and the possession um, had taken over him, the possession of the ship had taken over him. But in the very next scene, he's acting normal again and he's trying to save the girl that's um, that had fallen down on top of that orb in the main engine control room of the ship. He's trying to save her and bring her back to life and then he gets, something happens to him again. So that felt a little bit jarring, the fact that he was kind of going sinister and then he was back to normal in the next scene. So that's one scene that kind of stands out to me that doesn't feel like it was cut properly within context of the rest of the film. So as for the movie itself, guys, like I said, I really enjoy this movie. I think that it could be so much more if we were allowed to see that final cut, but I gotta give it a four out of a five because I just still really like and enjoy this movie. So let's go ahead and move on to the unboxing portion of this video. All right, everybody, welcome to the unboxing portion of this video. I have right here in my hand Event Horizon from Shout Factory Screen Factory. Right there, we have the title of the film. We've got the cast, Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill, leading this movie. Collector's Edition at the top. This is just fantastic artwork right here, guys. I love this artwork by Shout Factory Screen Factory. They really just do the best work when it comes to covers. Right here we have this kind of orb engine that takes the ship through the multi-dimension. Right below it you got the flames, you have the more hellish aspects of this film that really just melds the um, kind of hell and demonic with the sci-fi that just makes this film stand out and feel unique. You got uh, Sam Neill right there from the end of the film. You have the stasis pods right here at the end. You have the people walking through with the flashlights. You have this more Hellraiser type blood and gore right here on the walls that really just make this film feel kind of Clyde Barker-esque when you watch it. Uh, so amazing artwork right there. Look at the spine. You have Event Horizon. You have the Shot Factory Screen Factory logo. You have more artwork right there. Flip it on the back. We have a pull quote from Empire Magazine. You got the synopsis. You got some images from the film. You have these special features right here. I'm going to zoom in on it, guys, for you guys to check out. You have the casting list below and the specs right there at the bottom. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the slip cover, guys. And right here, you got the same artwork right there, guys. You have the same spine. And you have the, pretty much the same bag. It's a little reconfigured right here, but the same pull quotes, synopsis, and everything like that. Let's go ahead and open this up. And right here, guys, I love this, how they have original disc art on here. It's not the same as the theatrical poster. It's not the same as the Screen Factory artwork, which a lot of them will use the Screen Factory artwork for the disc. So I appreciate that this is original disc artwork, even though it is just an image from the film. 
it's still really cool that they they chose to do that so let's go ahead and uh, reverse this reversible cover art as you know this is what screen factory is known for the reversible cover art and right here guys we have the original theatrical poster from the film which i think is awesome with that ship right there right here on the uh spine guys we have the ship image right there so it's a little bit of a different spine than the other one this is pretty much the same back as the other side so that's cool but one question i want to ask you guys and i ask you ask you every time do you reverse the cover art or do you leave it be let me know that in the comments below i always reverse to the original poster if I have the slip cover. If I don't have the slip cover, I leave the Screen Factory. So let me know that in the comments below, guys. As far as the packaging on this one, and Screen Factory just always does such excellent work. It's hard not to give it a very solid 4.5 out of 5. I don't think it's perfect. I think there, there has been better Screen Factory artworks in the past, but I will give it a 4.5 out of 5. I think it is awesome. So let's get back to the visual, audio, and special features portion of this video. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the unboxing portion of this video. Let's get into um, the visual quality, the sound, and the special features portion of this review. So as for the visuals, guys, I think that this is honestly one of the best Screen Factory releases that I've ever seen. And I feel like I say that quite a bit with a, with a lot of stuff, but it really, I continue to be impressed with the work that they do in these restorations of this film. This almost felt like a 4K upscale restoration with this release. I just, I thought it was that good. Blacks were definitely deeper and it just, this is a dark movie. It's set in space. So a lot of the scenes are very dark and there's a lot of good colors within the film as well. And you do can just see everything so crystal clear it's just so crisp and like it, the views in space of the ship as they're like panning out like this movie looks like it could have been made today and it would have been an awesome film so i i just think that they did an excellent job with the visuals of this uh and i give it a 4.5 out of 5 for the visuals not the greatest i've ever seen but definitely definitely super solid and one of the best screen factory blu-ray releases that I have seen for sure. As for the sound, guys, this does support a DTS HD master audio at a 5.1 and stereo as well. It does have both. Um, like I've stated before, I do not have a complete sound system. I am operating off of just the sound bar only. So the sound to me sounded super crisp, super clear. Um, it has a lot of those because it takes on place on a spaceship. So you have a lot of those sounds or the boots hitting the metal of the ship when characters are running around. All sounds super clear and the score melds perfectly with it. From my angle, from my perspective, I didn't have one issue with the sound. I thought it was perfect. So I'm gonna give that a five out of a five. So let's go ahead and move on to the special features, guys. There are tons of special features um, with this release, tons of new interviews with the cast and the crew. The only negative that I give here with those interviews is the fact that and you know it's not really anybody's fault you know i don't know who to blame sam neil Lawrence fishburne the people that were involved here and how they reached out to these actors but the fact that you didn't get neil and fishburne either one to come back and do just a small interview even if it was just three to four minutes um is you know kind of sad to be honest i was hoping to at least have a sam neil or a Lawrence fishburne interview be it but they did have some really good interviews with some of the um secondary cast of this movie um again i would have liked to have seen jason isaacs because he did do the making of like years ago um jason isaacs or um jolie richardson coming back to do um, interviews for this movie. So the fact that they didn't get any of those, they got really got the third tier characters of this movie and some of the people that worked on the sets and Paul W.S. Anderson, of course, and the writer of the film. It's actually two really interesting interviews. And then they had the um, the making of, which I think came out probably with the Blu-ray, original Blu-ray release from 2008 or maybe even the DVD release from back in the day. I'm not quite sure, but um, that was clearly an older one. And then they had some of those deleted scenes that they brought him again not nearly enough to make up another cut there may be only like six or seven minutes of deleted footage they also had some concept um, artwork as well from scenes that didn't even get shot so that was cool to see theatrical trailer so overall guys uh, so, uh, tons of great special features with this release tons of new special features with this release my only criticism being is i just I really wish that they would have tried a little bit harder to get sam neill or lawrence fishburne to uh, do some of these interviews but who knows maybe their price was just a little bit too high but i give this a 4.5 out of 5 for the special features so for and overall, guys, like I said, the movie was a four out of five. 
Uh, packaging is a 4.5 out of 5. Visuals is a 4.5 out of 5. Sound is a 5 out of 5. Special features is a 4.5 out of 5 for a combined score, overall score of a 4.5 out of 5 for this release of Event Horizon from Shout Factory Screen Factory. One of the highest marks that I've ever gave any um, disc review. So I absolutely recommend that you pick this up if you are a fan of 90s science fiction horror movies if you are a fan of this movie this is the definitive way to own this movie it looks so freaking spectacular as far as visually and i just think it's one of the better 90s horror films if i'm being honest so yeah guys that is my review of event horizon if you can please like this video comment down below your thoughts on this movie your thoughts on the screen factor release also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already turn on those bell notifications for future videos and we'll see you next time.